So the Holy Spirit made her the way he wanted her. Just totally beautiful. Welcome back everybody. Today is Wednesday of the second week of Advent and we are celebrating a very special day today. It's the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. So today we're going to examine St. Alphonsus Liguori's thoughts on the Immaculate Conception. Keep in mind that he's speaking before the church officially defines this teaching for the entire church. So what is the Immaculate Conception? It is not the conception of Jesus Christ. The church is referring to, in the Immaculate Conception, the conception of Mary. So Mary was conceived by natural means between her parents. And at the moment of conception, she was preserved from the stain of original sin. And she was born in sanctifying grace by a singular grace given to her from God through the merits of her son, Jesus Christ. So this is a special grace given only to Mary. It's been given to no other. So to clarify and tighten up the language that I use, let's look at the official proclamation of the church. In 1854, Pope Pius IX defined this belief. We declare, pronounce, and define that the doctrine which holds that the most blessed Virgin Mary, from the first moment of her conception, by singular grace and privilege granted by Almighty God, in view of the merits of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the human race, was preserved free from all stain of original sin, is a doctrine revealed by God and therefore to be believed firmly and constantly by all the faithful. Okay, well, in reading these readings today, I found that he does speak a lot about Our Lady. Obviously, he doesn't really um, reiterate what the teaching of the Immaculate Conception is, but he does you know, share some really beautiful insights. And he quotes other saints. The first one is St. Gregory. St. Gregory says that an enemy cannot undertake to appease his judge, who is at the same time the injured party. For if he did, instead of appeasing him, he would provoke him to greater wrath. And therefore, as Mary was to be the mediatress of peace between men and God, it was of the utmost importance that she should not herself appear as a sinner and an enemy of God, but that she should appear in all things as a friend and free from every stain. Hence it was becoming that God should preserve her from sin, that she might not appear guilty of the same fault as the men for whom she was to intercede. So I just find this so interesting because obviously as our mother, she is to be our advocate. She's the one that kind of, you know, goes before us um, and, and, you know, kind of softens the heart of the father you know, on our behalf. And I think of it a lot, you know, like if I ever had like something serious or grave, like who would I go and tell? Usually it was my mom first, right? Because my mom could then go and like appease my my father and and then things would just go over a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. I, I, I see that all the time, even in our home. Like the kids always come to me. Right? It's true. <laughs> Janelle is the perfect advocate here in our home. <laughs> she softens my heart when the requests of our children come through you. Right. But the thing is, I am not a perfect advocate like Our Lady is. Right, right. Like sometimes I'll give in to our children maybe a little too much. Now sometimes we forget about how serious sin is. In Ephesians 2, 3, it describes that by nature we are children of wrath outside of God's grace. That's St. Paul's description of our position towards God. We're children of wrath. So we deserve eternal separation from God. So when Mary is given this special grace to be conceived without original sin, she has never known the position that we are in to be separated from God. She's the only one in heaven who can say that she has always been in friendship with God. That's a special grace no other saint in heaven has. Therefore, it elevates her in a, in a special place of honor, making her the most fit advocate to intercede for us for peace, a peaceful relationship with God. St. Thomas, who says that it was necessary that he who came to take away sins should be separated from sinners as to the fault under which Adam lay, but how could Jesus Christ be said to be separated from sinners if he had a mother who was a sinner? A point to consider, would it be fitting for God to choose for himself a mother that was an enemy of his? 
remember, we, we forget how serious original sin is. We are deserving of eternal separation from God. So again, would it be fitting for God to choose a mother who was deserving of eternal separation from him, who was not in friendship with him? Of course, God could do that. But what would be more fitting for God? Obviously, to choose one who is in friendship, who is in his likeness, rather than one who is his enemy. If then the Son of God alone could choose a mother according to his own heart and his own liking, we must consider, as a matter of course, that he chose one worthy of God. St. Thomas says that when God chooses any one for a particular dignity, he renders him fit for it. Hence, he adds that God, having chosen Mary for his mother, he also by his grace rendered her worthy of this highest of all dignities. Have you ever heard the expression, God does not call the equipped, he equips those who he calls? So in other words, if God calls you to something, we shouldn't ask the question, are we equipped to carry out the task? No, we just try and carry out the task and then he will equip us. Well, God called Mary to the highest dignity, to be his mother. And when he called her to this dignity, he equipped her with the grace to fulfill that call. And the highest grace that he could give to Mary is to give her the grace to be free from original sin. And now, had an excellent artist the power to make his bride in reality such as he would represent her in his picture, what pains would he not take to render her as beautiful as possible? Who then can say that the Holy Ghost did otherwise with Mary, when he could make her, who was to be his spouse, as beautiful as it was becoming that she should be? Ah, no, the Holy Ghost acted as it became him to act. For the same Lord declares, Thou art all fair, O my love, and there is not a spot in thee. So the Holy Spirit made her the way he wanted her. Just totally beautiful. Yeah, not very deep, but... But how little would Jesus have guarded his mother's honor had he not preserved her from Adam's sin, says the Augustinian father Thomas of Strasbourg, who, having it in his power to preserve his mother from original sin, did not do so. Consider that commandment, honor thy father and thy mother. God honors his mother in a most unique way because he gives her the grace to be free from original sin. And St. Alphonsus's point is this, that if God had the power to be able to do so and he didn't, would that not be a dishonor to Mary? Of course, he he's not suggesting that God would have done that, but he's saying, look, this is the honor and dignity that God, by his grace, has given to Mary. He's honoring her and fulfilling one way that commandment to honor thy father and thy mother. Interesting thought. Anyways, worth thinking about. Uh, If God asks us to honor our mother, doesn't he honor her as well? So friends, those are our thoughts about the Immaculate Conception. We're going to welcome you to pray the rosary along with us. But today I'm offering you a special rosary. It's a brand new one. I really would encourage you to click on it because I think you'll be surprised about what we have to share with you. So the link is going to be right up there. Comment below what stood out to you and why. And we will see you tomorrow. If you'd like all our future videos emailed to you upon release, head over to KenAndChanel.com and sign up. And also please consider joining our Patreon team. By supporting us monthly, you help us continue our ministry in proclaiming the beauty of the Catholic faith to a hurting world. Every pledge does make a difference, so thank you for your consideration.